Hello, Anomaly here, and welcome to another Quick Bites video. Today, we're talking about Rising Sun Kick and how the heck the resets work. Let's jump in. Today, we're going to cover a couple different things. We're going to walk through the tooltips of the different spells that are sort of involved in this uh, mechanic or this sort of a piece of Mistweaver tech. Um, we're going to walk through how the resets actually work, um, some of the math behind it, some of the reasoning behind it. And then finally, talk a little bit about the best way to use Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, and Tiger Palm uh, in your gameplay. Without further ado, uh, let's jump right in. Um, so a couple of qu quick uh, spells we have here. We have Rising Sun Kick, um, deals 143.8% attack power, has a 12 second base cooldown. Uh, this is affected by haste, so as a Mistweaver, you can lower this just through your haste. Uh, and costs about 1.5% of base mana. Uh, next up, you have Tiger Palm. Um, this is sort of a free melee ability. Does about 27% of your attack power as physical damage. Uh, this is one of your activators. Uh, and then the next ability on the list is Blackout Kick. Um, does a little bit more damage, 84.7% of attack power as physical damage, um, and has a three second cooldown. Um, very not, not really noticeable. It essentially just means you can't spam Blackout Kick back to back. Uh, and then finally, um, we have the main uh, sort of passive here. It's Teachings of the Monastery, which basically states Tiger Palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time, stacking up to three, um, basically allowing you to sort of hold on to three additional blackout kicks through the use of it. And then it also, uh, blackout kick has a 15% chance to reduce the remaining cooldown of Rising Sun Kick. This is where that reset chance comes into play. Um, so basically, you can use Tiger Palm to generate stacks of this Teachings buff. And then when you use blackout kick, it casts, you know, however many stacks you have, plus um, the actual hitting the button, the blackout kick that you trigger. Um, so if you have three stacks, that's four total blackout kicks. One stack of teachings is two. Um, so you have the one you cast and the one for the buff. Three stacks, you have the three from the buff plus the one that you have cast, four total. So how do the resets actually work uh, with this spell? Um, so first up, with teachings, each blackout kick has an independent 15% chance to reset the cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. Um, so it's all independent. There's no sort of need to have, you know, two of the three hits or two hits in a row sort of reset. It's just each blackout kick is independent. Also, this applies to any blackout kicks triggered from stacks of Teachings of the Monastery, meaning that if you have, you know, a three stack of Teachings and you hit blackout kick, you basically have four blackout kicks that get triggered instantly. Each one of those four has an independent 50% chance to reset the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick. So how does it actually work, right? So we know these numbers, we know it's a 15% chance to reset. Does that mean if you have a one stack of teachings and that means two blackout kicks, it's a 30% chance to reset? Not, not quite, it's not really how probability works. Basically the formula for probability here is one minus 0.85 to the X power, where X is the number of blackout kicks you are going to cast. Um, so at one stack of teachings, X is going to be two. At zero stacks, X is going to be one. Built a handy dandy little table to illustrate this. Basically, what it means is that at each, what the table has is each uh, level of stacks, it shows you the reset chance. So at zero stacks and you hit blackout kick, that's one hit, that's 15%. At one stack, which means two blackout kick hits, 27.8% chance. At two stacks, which is three blackout kick hits, 38.6. And finally, at three stacks, which is four blackout kick hits, um, it's 47.8% chance. Um, so that's how the probabilities break out. Again, these are probabilities. You can hit multiple three stacks in a row and not get a reset, um, or you can have back-to-back -back resets at zero stack. So it just all depends, but these are sort of the, the probabilities of percentages as they're laid out. So what is the best way to use this skill? And I think in peak, we always see a little bit of a debate around one stack of teachings versus three stack and why use either or. So I'd like to sort of illustrate some of the differences between the two. Um, so here we have a nice little table um, put together, and we're sort of um, looking at both sort of stacks. So at the top top row is going to be three stacks, and the bottom row will be one stack. And we're looking over the course of four GCDs, which is sort of a normalized way to look at this. So in the top version, you cast three consecutive Tiger Palms into a Blackout Kick. And with the one stack scenario, you're going to cast Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, basically alternating between the two. At the end of the day, you still get four blackout kicks over those four GCDs in either scenario. Um, so it doesn't matter um, whether you're three stacking or one stacking. The only difference, and it's really minor, is that you lose one Tiger Palm's worth of damage in the one stack scenario, as you can see. Yes, one last Tiger Palm, but at the end of the day, what we're really focusing on is the reset chance. In that case, it's the same. 
And as you can see here, illustrated reset chance uh, for three stack is again that four blackout kicks. Remember the table from the previous slide, 47.8% chance to reset. After two GCDs uh, in the one stack scenario, you have a 27.8% chance to reset. And after four GCDs, you have a 47.8% chance to reset exactly the same. And the reason the math works out, I sort of put a little note here if you care, but essentially you're comparing two independent events, the 27.8% chance of success. And from a probability perspective, works out again to 47.8% chance of success before. The one thing to keep in mind that really isn't illustrated here is that in the three stack scenario, you potentially may get multiple resets over those four blackout kicks, meaning that when you hit blackout kick, you know, two of the four hits in that sort of short window could actually have resets associated to them or reset success chances associated to them. So you may lose out on a couple of resets. And then also, as we look about at here at the bottom, um, the next sort of section is one stack, you do get that reset slightly earlier and less chance of munching. So again, yep, to trigger for early resets or fish for resets, as you may hear some of us call it, you want to do tiger palm black oak alternating. Um, essentially, you gain the chance to you know realize that reset two GCDs earlier uh, in the alternating scenario versus stacking up to three and essentially wasting it. One thing to keep in mind, though, is you do want to hold blackout kick if rising sun kick has less than three seconds remaining on its cooldown. The reason being, if you hit blackout kick and you get a reset, you're essentially using one. You, you, in three seconds, you have two GCDs to work with. Um, you're utilizing one to hit blackout kick and use the, and then the second, you would have to wait anyway to use rising sun kick, wasting reset chances. So sort of hold blackout kick when you get to sort of the three-ish second cooldown remaining on rising sun kick to not waste essentially all your blackout kick stack. You can hit more TPs, which is fine in that scenario, um, or cast another spell in those areas. And then finally, and this is a big one, never ever in the history of the world cast blackout kick after a Thunder Focus T buffed RSK. There's only about a two second window when you hit Thunder Focus T RSK to when your next RSK is available. One GCD hitting blackout kick there is just wasting any stack that you may have. Um, and so, yeah, so that's it. So that's sort of the, the, the big reasoning behind the one versus three stack. You essentially gain a chance to get those resets of Black Oak Kick, or sorry, of Rising Sun Kick earlier, uh, and which turn you're able to use them more. Um, and then one final note just on this is that while you are resetting the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick earlier than you would, it doesn't actually mean or equivalent to just more Rising Sun Kick cast. You really need to do multiple resets. Essentially, if you're sort of the base cooldown of Rising Sun Kick is 12 seconds, you need to be able to reset Rising Sun Kick enough to make up for that 12 second window, meaning you would need potentially like three resets of four seconds remaining or more, or you know, two resets of six seconds remaining or more on the cooldown. And that way you have reset the chance enough to then give you one additional cast at the time. Um, so don't look at this as just getting extra casts. It's really only multiple resets to do that. This just allows you to use Rising Sun Kick slightly more often. Um, over the course of the fight and it can add up but you have to consistently be in melee and using it awesome guys well thank you very much for watching this one again gosh my quick bites are going longer and longer i need to be quicker about this um but thank you very much for watching again if you have any questions you know use the comments here on youtube you can also head over to pika or any discord um ask there ping me ping whoever you want um and we'll help you out but again thank you very much for watching and have a good rest of your day we'll talk to you later bye